Concrete Mount Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with another fun take on a traditional block. This one I'm calling, again, Hot Cross Bun Part 2. Now this is hot, hot, hot Cross Buns Part 1 and I'm going to put a link in our show notes below so you can watch this one. This one's kind of a modern take. This one's more of a traditional take and it's great to use up those smaller scraps. So, But before we get into this, we got to do a shout out. Okay, our shout out today is Shelly at Shelly Sutton Quilts. Now you're going to find her YouTube channel below. She's new, so go give her some encouragement and some love. And if you like what you see there, you know, hit that subscribe button because I think she's got some wonderful potential. Also, what you're going to find in the show notes below is our Facebook group, which is growing rapidly. We do all the same things Facebook groups do, like, you know, showing pictures and asking questions and sharing quilting experiences and all this stuff. But we also have several community chats going on. We have a virtual sewing room, which people love hanging out in there and, you know, going to sew with people online. You never know who you're going to meet in there. It's all sorts of fun. And we also have a recipe page so that you can make recipes for your family while you, you know, in your crock pot and, you know, sew for the day. That's one of my favorites. I like that one very much. And we also do fabric swaps by country. And those people are getting to know each other and becoming friends and having a great time in there. We have some wonderful volunteers that have stepped up to help out with those fabric swaps. And it's just been so much fun. Another link you're going to find is our Zoom so day. It's usually the first Saturday of the month, but we over the summer we've got camping plans, hopefully with our grandchildren. So we haven't laid out, you know, June and July yet and August. But we're when we find out when we're going camping, we'll let you know it might be the second Saturday of the month, but it will be a Saturday. Now, uh, lastly, I'm part of a collaboration, and it's starting the either the end of June or beginning of July. I have to look at my notes, but we are testing each other's blocks out, and those blocks are drop-dead gorgeous. I sent a picture of my block to some people that don't quilt, and they were impressed. So this is how lovely these blocks are. Uh, lastly, I if your quilting group or quilt guild is looking for a speaker, I speak for free, I do it over Zoom only, and I have a PowerPoint presentation. I no longer have a trunk show of 300 pounds of quilts to drag around the country, and it just is not my thing to be dragging in, around stuff like that. So <laughs> if your, your quilt group is looking, I hope to be paid by being allowed to stay for the show and tell. So come on in, let's get to this fun sewing here today. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to start with the hardest part first. Now, the hardest part is usually the smallest part, so you're going to get the little fiddly bits done first. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start putting the one and a half inch squares together, and that, that'll help speed this along, because once you get those together, and I, I chose no directional prints. I mean, you know, the prints I got are pretty much non-directional so you can put them any which way and that helps the sewing go a little bit quicker and yeah I um, was donated um, some four or five inch squares that are just like all over the place in measurements and it was like okay this is perfect to use up a little bit this is a perfect one I mean a lot of them are perfect but this also too gives a lot of space to the block and now one of the things I have been finding in my years of quilting is if I pick one neutral to go all the way through the entire block, the block looks unified. The block itself looks unified. Then you can change up, if you change up from the background colors from one block to the next, let's say you're making 35 of these, right? And you were changing up the the background colors it would still look unified right because you know within this area it's all the same block you'd be able to tell right so that's what i'm trying to create some unity within the block now, i don't have a leader ender project so i will just keep rolling through these just like this Pick them up two at a time so they stay together. If you were doing several blocks at once, this is perfect. This is a perfect way to chain piece them together because then they're all 
like what block because basically there's mini blocks inside a bigger block right so yeah there we go yeah we just want to do the other side of the red there no pinky red it's not even a red it's kind of yeah it's kind of fun Ugh. we're not pressing open we're not doing nothing right now all we're doing is getting these together that's it and it's a lot of this would be a perfect leader ender block you know as you sit beside you make you know two quilts at once this one you know to do all of these would be perfect as a leader ender it's small enough and it's simple enough and then you all have to do is match up the the center pieces right these pieces here with what you're sewing and you a leader ender too with this you can put like if you had like i could put three or two pieces of leader ender stuff through a sewing machine at a time so it stays together right so you're not sitting there hunting through several you know just leave them on the machine right so yeah okay i love this uh handkerchief or scarf that kind of cowboy handkerchief thing i just love that fabric and last up there okay last up is this pretty little blue i left the darkest one for the center because i thought that would balance it out but once we get them all sewn together you know you can you can switch them around but okay so yeah the medium colors i put the medium colors here i put to the outside where the dark is in the middle but you know you can switch that around any way you want so now it comes we got two at a time i'm just gonna run this through I've got a different plug this one's seen better days so now what we're gonna do is we're going to cut this in half and just finger press oops finger press to the dark we're going to finger press the center because that's the way you won't see anything so if your white is a little on the thin side you're not going to see it come through right so and it's just a quick matter of just giving it a quick little finger press you could take it to an ironing board if you want but for these purposes for what we're doing here i'm just going to give it a quick press and we're done let me just line them up again now i thought they were kind of cute i just really loved this when i started playing around with this i thought oh this is such a sweet idea but there's other ways there's all sorts of ways of doing hot cross buns but and normally it's the white because on a like the traditional hot cross buns that you eat it's white icing right but i mean you could play around with this and make little crosses and just have all sorts of fun with it so i thought okay i'm gonna show you this one there okay two more to go and then we start getting some real progress on this like i say perfect leader ender you could do quite a few of these in a day if you were doing it as a leader and you're sewing another quilt block as you're putting these through so because they're short and you don't need a lot of you know you don't need a lot of thread here to make this go okay last one okay now we're ready to start sewing these so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the center of one now i have a choice either i can leave the seam up which i think might be a good idea because i don't want my seams to flip and there we go there nice now you take your time to match up the end and you get a nice cute little three and a half inch block because these once they're all sewn together should be three and a half inches square you know but yeah 
Okay, oops, let's go just like that. Yeah. So I've had such a wonderful holiday in Arizona. Part of me is very sad to go home to Canada. And part of me is very happy to go home to Canada because I get to see my grandkids. So kind of, there's always, you know, the, when you're in, in Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, I miss the people here that I know. And then I, you know, hang out with. And when I'm home, <laughs> when I'm when I'm here, I miss the people at home. So it's kind of a, you know, it's always I'm always missing someone. Now with this, I'm going to press to the dark, right? So I'm just going to take this off, give it a good little finger press. Queen of the finger press. Here we are. Okay. And again, I'm going to sew so I can see my where my seams and I don't flip them. I don't want them flipped at all. Okay, just line them up. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give it a quick finger press. Okay, there. Okay. I've had a few requests here to make a uh, cat, not cat, um, dog blocks and a chicken block. And I'm still working on those. I'm going to try and get them at least drafted so that I have an idea as to what I'm going to do here. But it might take a while before I actually get to, to sew them. So be patient with me. There's only so much I can do in a week. <laughs> like in a week and right now we're actually thinking as we're filming this we're actually thinking about how we're going to pack up all this stuff so it's like you know it's one of those it's one of those things how we're going to how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that I mean we go through this every year well we're kind of out of practice because of the pandemic we haven't been here for three years so yeah we gotta figure out how to do all this again but yeah there Okay, last one. The board looks kind of empty now. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, now, we're going to... Now, you want to press to the dart. Also, it gives those seams here on these two side pieces a place to lay. You know, and the block actually lay, lies flatter right because you know the seam you're not pushing seams up out of the way you know in the way so it's actually a cute little a cute little thing there it is now some of you have also figured out that i'm doing 12 and a half inch blocks yes it is easier to do all 12 and a half inch blocks while i'm here because I don't have to worry about trying to resize everything. I mean, I have a few blocks that aren't 12 and a half right now, but I mean, they're easy enough to make. Okay, so this is where we're at. Now, we're going to assemble this just like a nine patch from the center and then sew on the outside. So this comes together very quick by webbing. Now, I can't see my seams, but I can feel them. And I wanna make sure they're all staying the way I need them to stay. So this goes on top. There we go. This goes this way. There we go. Yeah, I really like this white check. It's got a faint blue line through it, and it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. When you see a good check, pick it up because we always forget to pick up our check. When we're looking for textures, you know, to add to our scrappy quilts, we always forget checks, right? Because they don't make that much check fabric, but they should. They should make beautiful. There's always room for a good check in your quilt. Okay, anyways, here we go. Another row. Yeah. Here we go. And there. Okay. There. And okay. 
this off. Now I'm going to go the other way. Now we can see when we do this, we've got it all going the right way, right? It's all laid out correctly. So we can just flip and, and go. We don't have to, you know, re try and assemble it all back out again or, you know, try and figure, well, did I do this right? Did I do that right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the solid pieces out. So everything, so all the solids now are going to go to the opposite direction. Right? So I'm pressing to the solid piece because that's going to give me the least pass, path of resistance. Okay, what have I done? Okay, there we go. There. And my block, that also is going to help my block life ladder. Why is this being so difficult? Well, some of these, sometimes you got a difficult seam to nest. And you do, you just press it. And there we go. Now, let me look at that seam before I have to see whether or not I have to pick it or not. Because it, no, it good. It did good. Okay. Next one is, so these are going in. They, they naturally want to go in, so I'm just going to let them go in, right? Okay. Now, with, I should be doing this with my needle down, but I didn't. Oh no. Okay. Now, now make sure everything lies nice and flat. Yes, it does. And this. Goes here, nice. There we go. And once you're over, like even one stitch with the needle down, line up the end, and everything goes in nice and flat. Okay. Now. Okay, so these are all going this way in. These are going out and these are going in. So that's perfect. Now we have to decide which way these are going out and this is going in. Wait a minute, does it, no, it does not twirl. Okay, so I will have to iron those flat, but yeah. Okay, so now let's go back to this and we're going to do the short sides first. Now this is what this does is make it give some place for all those edge seams to rest or to hide in. You know, it gives a nice, nice finish to a block sometimes. You know, put a little bit of outer casting on and you create more white space within your quilt or low volume space within your quilt and gives your plate your eye a place to rest. always a nice touch for your quilt. Yeah, I do need a new job. <laughs> okay, and that piece goes on this side. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're sensing there. just going to finger press this open just like so just take push it out of the way because now you're giving those seams a place to rest nice there we go and now we take one I'm gonna move the board because it's now in my way <laughs> okay so now we're gonna take this line this up at the top there we go and line it up at the bottom Ooh, something's really wrong. Something's really off here. Hang on. Yeah, I cut this too. I cut this wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what's wrong after I finish trimming it. What am I going to do? I might have an on side block. That's okay. I will make sure the cutting instructions are correct for you. At least you get an idea of how big this is. 
like this here, just these ones here are nine and a half, right? So if I have uh, a cutting mishap, which I think it looks like it is, I will check that. Everybody does this. Everybody does a, a cutting mishap and that's fine. And we'll give it a good press and make sure I've got the right cutting instructions for you. But at least this gives you an idea of what this thing is going to look like, right? Now I'm just going to trim. No, I'm not going to trim it off. Just going to see where we are. There. Get this one on. There we go. Why did I cut it wrong? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of things we do around here someday. This is what happens. When you try and get too many things ready, you know, when you, you have a day where you have lots of things that you need to sew, yeah, that's what happens. So, all right. Oh, I know what I did. Anyways, okay. So, I'm going to show you how to do the pressing right the pressing now I'm going to go back and check my cutting instruction I give you a good press we're going to have a good press on this and we're going to show you just how to get everything nice flat you clip up to but not through the seam and then this will lie flat just like that just like that it lies magically flat and nobody needs to be wiser uh, there is a, a foobah on the cutting instructions. I'll fix that for you guys so you have the right cutting instructions. And we'll get to our ta-da moment. So here's our hot cross buns part two. This is part one here, but this is a more traditional hot cross buns. It's a perfect little leader ender for these little crosses that go on this block. Now, some of you noticed that there was... Uh, uh, sewing oops right at the end as I was sewing on this outer white seam The cutting instructions are correct. I cut it wrong. So I'm okay with admitting my mistakes I'm going to fix it by adding a really uh, solid dark blue around to just to to make all the colors in this block pop and, and I'm going to use it then as an orphan block, right? So it'll be fun. It'll be used. It won't be wasted this is a, a no waste or very low waste uh, studio. So this was a lot of fun to put together. Um, I am going to put the link in the show notes for this one. That one is a very modern, you know, take on a hot cross bun. And this one was a lot of fun to sew together as well. So I do hope you give one of these a try. It was a lot of fun coming up with this for you today and showing you how it's done. So I hope you have an absolutely amazing week ahead and life is going good for you. Take care until we see each other again. Okay, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for watching in uh, our video and being so supportive of our channel. This has been just such an amazing journey we're on here on YouTube. And we just, we wouldn't been able to do it without you. So our thanks, truly our thanks for you. If there's anything you need, don't be afraid to contact me either through the Facebook book or through email. I, uh, I'm trying to do as many viewer request videos as possible. And if I don't do it, you, you need to remind me. Okay. So that's not a problem, <laughs> but yes, it's been just absolutely amazing. Tell, make sure you tell your gills I speak for free. I, you know, we have a Facebook group. We do Zoom so dates. And we're, we give out nothing but free patterns. So I hope that you have an absolutely joyful year ahead. And your sewing room, everything is going for you. And life is great. Okay, you take care until we see each other again. Okay, bye.